Welcome back to this episode of Redefining Hustle, Navigating Success as a Christian Woman. I want to start by saying I've had a lot of men listening to this podcast. And here's the thing is that although the Lord has specifically told me to work with my ambitious sisters in Christ, this message of navigating success by the Lord's map is for every single Christian, whether you're in a business, in a nonprofit, in a boardroom, wherever you're leading, in whatever the work is that you're doing. And today I wanna ask you this question. Do you ever struggle with replaying a past event, a past situation, uh, past work that you did or did not do well in your mind and keeping it on repeat? Friends, I know that I struggle here. It's like the recording keeps going over and over. And this especially happens to me when I'm in a state of halt, as Dr. Charles Stanley has called it, when I'm hungry, when I'm angry, when I'm lonely, and when I'm tired. Because it's in those moments that the enemy knows how to attack us, to get us whirling and swirling and spiraling in self-doubt and discontentment and and distraction because he wants us distracted from the work that God has given us to do, from the mission in the marketplace that God is using us for. Last week, I had the opportunity and the honor to attend the Armed Media Conference for Christian Communicators. It was filled with incredible worship and healing and deliverance and nuts and bolts and tactical tips around YouTube and social media, et cetera. But one particular speaker, evangelist and YouTuber, David Diga Hernandez, I'll have a link to his channel down here in the show notes, said something that I have had on repeat since I left, since the day that he said it, which was Thursday. He said, if you honor God and what he has done before, he will bring you something fresh. If you honor what God has done before, he will bring you something fresh. This reminded me of a couple of conversations that I had last week, one with a high-level business leader, multi-million dollar businesses that they have run and sold. And as the Lord got a hold of them, they completely changed where they wanted to go and what they wanted to do. And what was fascinating was this sentiment that I don't know where I'm going, but I don't want to repeat my past. But what we discount sometimes in that is that God has made us ambitious and he has given us very specific gifts and talents to be vehicles and vessels for him, right? And we have had great success in business and leadership. But when the Lord gets a hold of us, sometimes we want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We want to forget all of the past and discount the good things that happened as if they don't count because we weren't walking with Jesus at that time. But what if you are like Saul on the road to Damascus, ambitious, walking out that ambition, doing what you know to do, successful, respected, maybe a little bit feared as as Saul was, but then you met Jesus and he began to shift you in a new direction. And he didn't want you to give up the gifts and the talents and, and the skills that he had given you. No, no, no. He wanted to turn you like Paul and use that ambition for something new and something fresh. And how often do we not honor what God has done before and believe that he will bring something fresh because we're a little bit apprehensive that we might go backwards. Let me first take you to Isaiah 43. We're going to be here for a couple of different sections. In Isaiah 43, 1 and 2, and this is where the Lord is promising and Isaiah is delivering the message that he will restore, the Lord will restore Israel. And Isaiah says, now this is what the Lord says to the one who created you, Jacob, the one who formed you, Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, and you are mine. Can we just say hallelujah that we belong to him? If you're in the car, if you're with friends, can you just say out loud, hallelujah, I am his. 
when you pass through the waters, I will be with you and the rivers will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched and the flame will not burn you. First, I want to draw us to the attention, as I said a minute ago, that we are his and he has redeemed us. Friend, your past is redeemed. Don't miss that. That is truth. Your past is redeemed. And there are pieces from your past that the Lord will bring forward in this new season to have you work in a fresh way. But the other thing that I want to point out is that he doesn't say if you pass through the waters or if you're in the river or if you'll be in the fire. He says when, when. Jesus tells us, right, in this world you will have trouble, but I have overcome the world. We are victorious in Jesus. So there will be challenges in your business and you will be working hard. Listen, walking with the Lord, navigating success his way is not easy. There is an ease. There is a peace and a calm to it if we will tap into that and just lean into him and hold on tighter. But there will be challenge. There will be hard times. Nothing is going to be perfect. But when those times come, he says, he is with us, that we will not be overwhelmed by those times and that the fire will not burn us. But let me also take us to Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. And this is what it says. Do not remember the past events. Pay no attention to things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He is bringing you something fresh. He has redeemed the past to bring you something fresh, to use you in a fresh way. But here's the deal. As high achievers, we can feel pretty apprehensive about putting that past experience to work in new ways. Because what if, what if we go back to our old ways? We are a new creation. What if we get caught up in the world's hustle again? If we're navigating the Lord's way, we're following him. Will there be moments where we get caught up in the way the world hustles? Yeah, yeah, it will happen. But we will not be overcome. We will not be overwhelmed. We can always come back to him and remember that he has redeemed us for something fresh. And what if people don't understand us? They're confused. I have a number of clients who are moving in a new direction right now. And they're like, but I've been known for this content or I've been known for this service. And now the Lord is calling me that way. What if people are confused by that? Let me say something to you, Lord, to, to you all. <laughs> the vision the Lord has given you is for you. Nobody else has to understand it. Are we now working for man and trying to please him or are we pleasing the Lord? Galatians 1.10. Friends, he wants to give you something fresh. So let me say it again. If you honor what God has done before, he will bring you something fresh. He has redeemed it. He has redeemed it. And here's the deal. That doesn't mean that we poo-poo it. That doesn't mean that we, that we um, discount it. We are not discounting it. It doesn't mean that we idolize the past. It doesn't mean that we bemoan the past. No, no, no. It means that we honor what God has done. Where has God brought you out of? I can tell you for sure that he has brought us through financial crisis, that he has strengthened our marriage, that he brought my husband to the Lord. I can tell you that he has changed everything about the way I view business and I do business. And then, then he commissioned me to bring that forward to teach you that through my coaching and my writing and my speaking and, my, and this podcast right here. But here's what we've got to be able to do is understand that when we say yes to the Lord, <laughs> we have to know that our past may look riddled with mistakes and um condemnable offenses, right? But the Lord redeems it all. But we've got to be willing to step out of our grave clothes. What do I mean by that? Well, in John 11, 43 and 44, John tells of, tells of one of the, I think it is the last miracle that the Lord Jesus did. And he raised Lazarus from the dead. And as Lazarus was walking out of the grave, he gives this instruction to the people there, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Can you imagine Lazarus walking out into life again, trailing 
the grave clothes behind him like he got a piece of toilet paper stuck to his shoe, right? No, 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 friends. So many of us do that. We continue to let the past drag along with us. And the Lord is saying, honor what I've done. See, I'm making a new way. But we've got to be willing to walk out of those grave clothes and remove the remnants of our old life. Are there going to be times that we're tempted to look at that again? Yes. Let me give you a real life example that I am working through with the Lord right now. I am really excited to be traveling to San Diego in September to record the audio version of Pursuing Success God's Way. I am in the in the middle of publishing the Redefining Hustle journal and I'm in the middle of writing a chapter for a collaborative book, the second volume of We Lead um, Connections, Collaboration, and Community for Women in Business. On top of that, the Lord has made it clear it's time for me to write my next solo book. And here's the deal, friends. That's going to take investment, investment of time, investment of dollars. I'm going to be working with a publisher on this. And it scares me. And here's why. Because I came from a place of debt. I came from a place of rampant spending. That was my drug of choice, if you will. And we came through that with the Lord, praise Jesus, through Financial Peace University. And at times, my husband reminds me, we are not those people anymore. <laughs> but what scares me about this investment is I don't happen to have all of the cash on hand for this project. But am I going to trust the Lord or not? Now, please hear me all my friends who don't believe in debt. <laughs> I am not telling you to go and incur debt in your business. This is not what I'm telling you. What I am saying is that what the Lord has called me to, he's called me to trust him in. I can't see where, where that provision is, but where he gives permission, he gives provision and where he guides, he provides. So I'm standing here looking at the past me and going, Lord, I, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And he is saying, Take off those grave clothes. Honor what I've done before. I'm bringing you something new. I'm creating a path through the wilderness. You will not be overrun. You will not be burned in this fire. This is the assignment that he's given me. And so, yes, I am right here with you, friends, apprehensive about bringing forward work I've done before or will I go back into those old ways? So let me say it. One more time, remove those grave clothes. Trust that he is bringing you something afresh and let us rebuke that lie of apprehension. The enemy wants you apprehensive because he doesn't want you stepping forward, right? Let us rebuke that. And here's the deal is that the work that the Lord has given me to do, I'm not here to save people. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. But what I can do and what I do is I help people step out of those grave clothes. How? Through encouragement, through accountability, through strategy. Yes, admonishment and helping them to stay disciplined and helping them to stay accountable to how God has defined and direct them and to put that work into discipline and then helping them stay steady, hanging on to the Lord as he develops them. That, my friends, is from the four keys to redefine hustle. And I hope you'll go grab my audio devotional at aaronharrigan.com slash devotional. The link is also in the show notes. As we finish up today, I pray this blesses you. I pray that it helps you rebuke that apprehension and leave it at the foot of the cross so that you can step into what God has next for you. At the end of this, this episode, you're going to hear me talk about my coaching. If you are at a place where you are ready to step into coaching, at the intersection of biblical truth and business acumen. I'm your gal. Let's chat about it. But until we're together next time, I pray for and encourage you to tune out the world and its lies, to tune into God's truth that he has redeemed your past for a purpose, and to turn up your focus, to focus on Christ until steady. And I'll see you on the next episode.